Hi, I'm Chris Octo, a postdoc here at UCLA in Bell Cox Lab in the Department of Physiology. Today, I'm going to tell you about a new resource which we have developed that enables the assessment of stable and dynamic astrocytic interactions with neuronal cell bodies and synapses. I will go over the specific method that we have used and highlight some important developments in our understanding of astrocyte synaptic dynamics in normal physiology and disease processes. Astrocytes are bushy, highly complex branching cells. Up to 95% of a single cell's volume comprises processes which lack organelles, are devoid of classical markers such as GFAP, and have a high surface area to volume ratio. Astrocyte processes are particularly fascinating because they contact blood vessels, cell bodies, and tens of thousands of synapses in a single cell's territory. To study how astrocyte processes contact synapses, we developed the tool that we call NAPA. NAPA is a light microscopy-based imaging method which uses FRET and colocalization to assess cell-to-cell -cell contacts over multiple distance scales. We developed cell surface targeted fluorophores which label astrocyte processes and presynaptic nerve terminals. With these new probes, we can detect three types of interactions. At the most proximate, colocalization and FRET reports interactions that occur over distances of less than 20 nanometers. Colocalization in the absence of FRET reports distal interactions that occur between 20 and 600 nanometers. And at the furthest distance, no colocalization or FRET reports unresolved interactions at greater than 600 nanometers. Once we tested these constructs in cell cultures, we then generated AAVs that specifically express in astrocytes or neurons in vivo. We then used these AAVs to label astrocytes in the striatum, and through targeted microinjections, we interrogated individual neural inputs into the striatum. We assessed collateral, nigrostriatal, corticostriatal, and thalamostriatal projections and how they contact astrocyte processes. By using this NAPA method, we were then able to assess how striatal astrocytes wire with these neural inputs. Overall, striatal astrocytes appear to equivalently sample the striatal inputs that we assessed by colocalization. However, when we looked at the FRET signals from these inputs, we found strong differences in their level of contact. For example, we found the most proximate associations with MSN collateral projections, but the most distal associations with the nigrostriatal projections. We then assessed excitatory inputs and dopaminergic inputs in relation to astrocyte processes by serial block face scanning electron microscopy. Overall, astrocyte processes were found at a range of distances from synapses, from the most proximate interactions, where astrocyte processes directly opposed presynaptic terminals, to those much further away. When we looked for differences between these striatal inputs, we found that astrocyte processes more closely opposed glutamatergic terminals than dopaminergic terminals, supporting our observations from the NAPA assessments. After we identified how astrocytes contacted synapses, we then determined how striatal astrocytes and neuronal cell bodies were associated. We found that D1 and D2 positive MSNs were equivalently enveloped within an astrocyte's territory. To assess astrocyte process dynamics with synaptic signaling, we electrically evoked EPSCs at corticostriatal terminals. We confirmed that striatal astrocytes could detect glutamate release by eye glue sniffer imaging and respond to it with calcium increases by LCK GCAMP 6F. However, when we assessed the FRET and colocalization signals of these inputs before and after stimulation, we found the interactions to be robustly stable. In contrast to the relative stability of these interactions under electrical stimulation, when we examined astrocyte process contacts with synapses in disease conditions like stroke and Huntington's disease, we found good evidence for motility and dynamics. For example, in the OGD model of stroke, we observed a robust increase in the size of the astrocyte territory and a concordant change in the colocalized and fret areas within the astrocyte territory. Furthermore, in an HD model, we found that astrocyte processes were markedly withdrawn, resulting in a loss of astrocyte synaptic interactions. The loss of these engagements occurred in the absence of overt astrogliosis as assessed by GFAP staining. In this paper, we generated a new tool called NAMPA, which enables the sub-diffraction limited light microscopy assessment of contacts between astrocytes and neurons in living tissue. 
Using NAPA, we characterize how four distinct striatal inputs and two types of neuronal cell bodies physically interact with astrocytes. We then assess the dynamics of astrocyte processes at specific striatal inputs in the context of electrical field stimulation, oxygen glucose deprivation, and in HD model mice. In addition to these acute slice experiments, NAPA is also compatible with in vivo imaging. To make these tools accessible to others in the field, we have released all our new plasmid constructs on AdGene. The AAVs that we generated are available from the University of Pennsylvania Vector Core. We believe that NAPA will help the field to explore new frontiers in astrocyte biology. Thank you for watching.